based off the knowledge that he has. Did I do a so good job? Um, that's good. I mean, you're you're learning, you're improving. You know, by the end of this year, Gary, you're gonna be, uh, you know, you're gonna be uh, competing with Heen for the oh hell yeah coach slot on Team Secret. Can I, can I have a gold star or like a smiley sticker? Can I can I have something that is there a board? Do I get a point? Anything? Oh yeah. Yeah, because you're starting off like you're like in kindergarten right now, right? I'm so, at zero points. Your first... Okay, exactly. You're going to start with the little stickers. Anyway, let's get into this game, Gary. You got Go some fights it. right now. Well, top lane, someone's already dying, Theban. Rage King's been destroyed by tag team level one with a tri lane from Hakori. All thanks to yeah, the Arctic nice. Burn. That was very good first blood there onto the Wraith King. I mean, you, you're going to give Beastmaster a solid head start now. And I think 0900 were supposed to make that call. The Winter Wyvern is not showing on the bottom lane. Should have expected the three heroes there. And maybe Jericho, he probably needed to tank that gang. Oh, and they lose the Courier too. It's a great start in that top lane. Another Shards and Tank Team puts Jericho low. Forced to pop a mango. So already off to a pretty good beginning there. There's a, a massive creep wave coming into that dire tier one though, so Wraith King should be able to farm up the remnants of the creeps arriving. Radiance and into the other lanes. Lash rack against the Invoker and slot in on that Wind Ranger down bottom with a Sand King against Wyvern PL. It's slot in again on this kind of finesse position four hero. We've seen Skywrath, we've seen Mars. He's uh, picking some pretty slippery initiation heroes in that position four. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing a lot of this position for Wind Rangers. Um, I'm still not sure how I feel about it. It's, it's like either a big hit or a complete miss. So. We'll see how he plays in this game, but Wind Ranger against Phantom Lancer, that's just absolutely miserable for the most part. Yeah. But he does have a Sand King, though. And in this lane mm -hmm. so far, Greedy is 13 nil on CS with Burrow Strike and yeah. Sandstorm, level Dyer's one and two. We'll lose to Korea. Against PL. And they don't have a Sentry in the bottom lane for the D Ward onto the one that Gardic has placed down. Unfortunately for the Wyvern, that sentry's just out of observer range. Oh, yeah, that is very unfortunate. That would have been some nice golden XP for the Wyvern. Get to his next items a little bit quicker. See some aggression top tombstone being dropped by undying, but that's a boots toss though. You're not going to be able to chase him down. <laughs> Yeah, there's like two zombies, a skeleton chasing the tub. <laughs> he just yeah, runs away. His like, Wyvern uh, is the one in actual trouble. Chased down by Sladin. Wyvern pops the fairy fire. Gets a bit of distance from the Wind Ranger. Uh, two hits after the Wind Run, though. The Arctic Burn try and get him up over the cliff top. The Power Shot comes through to finish him off. So now even more space for this Sand King to continue farming like a madman. They definitely need one of these lanes to go their way here. Beastmaster, top, uh, it's just pretty much free farming. I mean, Wraith King is also free farming, but he's going to get that quick Necro 1 on the Beast, and that's going to be dominating up here. Even the Tombstone doesn't stand a chance against the Necro early on. And if you're undying, is trapped in the shards like this. El Misho with that boar slow as well. Vitali's in on top yeah, of the Undying's head. He soul rips, he turns with a Wraith Fire zombies. Blast and a Decay. Zombie skeletons, they're everywhere. Right, but so skeletons, yep. El Misho, like you mentioned, those boots are allowing him just to wander away from danger. I'm going to get so confused every time I see the skeletons Me and the too. zombies. <laughs> yep. It's a walking dead out here on 0900. Just need to, like, you know, Combine them into one word. You don't have to worry about it. Don't say zombies or skeletons. Just oh god, help me show. How wait? How did wait, he die? He, okay, he was... tower. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I thought he died to the skeletons <laughs> that too. were chasing him like across the map. Nah, he just died to the tower. He wants to come back on the map asap. But that's gold for the Wraith King. I mean, he's happy about that. Radiant structures are fortified. Now super concerned. That. Dyer's Midas has been killed. Hand of Midas Wraith King. Honestly, I'm not that like disappointed with the Midas. I, I actually like Midas versus the Armlet. I think the Armlet, if you don't buy that against the PL, that's for sure. If that's the case, you're better off rushing the Radiance, but mm -hmm. Midas, you know, it's not as expensive and it will give you back some some of that gold that you spend anyway, and it'll let you scale and much you're, quicker. You're against Beastmaster with summons too, right? So you'll be able to kill them off. 
Into Wyvern again. Just a classic sanking stun into a power shot. It's a lot of burst damage between these two heroes. Wind Ranger loves playing with these uh, disabled heroes, just setting up for her. And yeah, and Wyvern has to play the kind of left hand side of that bottom lane to defend the Phantom Lancer and the Creep Wave. And she's always going to be bumping into the head of the Wind Ranger at that point. Yeah. You're stopping the Wind Ranger from pulling the big camp. Because once the big camp gets pulled and the sagging just sandstorms in there, the PO can't even contest for the creeps. It's extremely difficult. I mean, so far though, he is free farming bottom, but yeah. it's not, it hasn't been really for free because your wyvern has been dying. Definitely contested and not comfortable. Wyvern, in fact, comes in towards mid lane. Dire Observer Ward sees her hiding away in those trees. And yeah, that's a really nice ward they got out there. Very Die. deep Oscar. on Radiant Hill. Yeah, because the Wind Ranger was able to come in and deward the Radiant Ward mid, ward mid, and then ward in that jungle, so they see a hell of a lot. And Lesh grabs a DD rune, farms jungle, and runs back deeper into the jungle to keep on farming, leaving mid lane completely open. So Sladen's that rotation levels. doesn't uh, doesn't come to anything. Yeah, you don't want to be less track against the Crosswex Invoker. You just get tornadoed, EMP'd, cold snapped, you lose. 70% of your HP and your entire mana pool, you can't farm anymore. And Leshek as a level 6, Pulse Nova, one of the fastest farmers in the jungle. Very efficient damage versus mana usage. Mm -hmm. And self stacking. Okay, so those creep camps going. I burn. Oh, jeez. Super close. I got but it, it's that kind of decision making that you mentioned that it's nice to see he's preemptively doing it, right? He's not waiting mm -hmm. for that, that first move from the Invoker. He knows that will happen, so he's already responding, yep. adapting beforehand. That's top lane. They do catch. The Wraith King in a, a lot roll, of DPs. But a Burrow Strike from Greedy, and the zombies are stacking up with all the skeletons. Wraith King with a very nice fire. Oh, he survives, and now with everybody here from 0900, they clear up the aggression from El Nisho and Vitali as well as saving their Wraith King. I mean, normally I would say having three of your cores in one lane at seven minutes is bad, but damn, those two TPs and netting the kills on the Beast Tusk and saving the Wraith King. Wraith King just going to be able to heal right back up with that Vampiric Spirit, level three. I mean, that was a huge win. On the other hand though, Leshrak making a really smart decision to go bottom, popping the Edict with the PL. This, that's a tier one tower take. Another good return move on the side of Hikari. Yeah, but mid lane, they'll find Gardic missing out on the power shot snipe, so Cold Embrace delays the inevitable end for the Winter Wyvern. And they're trying to Not gonna have to, like four heroes mid here for them. I don't think they can really push though, can they? Nah, they can't. They don't have the heroes for it. They really don't have the heroes or the damage. As in hero, what I mean by heroes, like they don't have the right heroes in their draft that can just take towers like this Lashrak and PL were able to bottom. And with that, like it's really unusual for the bottom dire tier one to be the first tower to fall. It's kind of unsettled yeah. me in thinking, like, what does it mean? Can the you know usually when you you lose a tower, you're thinking, what can the team do that took the tower? Can they invade jungle? Can they move in towards Roche Pit? What's the objective tower. afterwards? Tower. Bottom tier one is kind of so useless. It's like, well, nothing. It was just a tower for money. What it does do though is uh, it hurts 0900's chance of taking your bottom tower. Oh yeah. Because now they have to TP to the tier two or smoke all the way down there. And if they fend you off, then it's so hard to just go back down there and like make reactionary moves whenever you see Hikori somewhere else on the map. Uh, it's actually surprisingly quite a good tower to kill. It's just so hard typically in games to take it. Tombstone dropped. Chasing down the beast master. And the zombies. And, and the skeletons. Oh, going boy. to tornado up all the summons, so the Wraith King, he's out of there. Midas is up on Midas. the creeps, and that's it. The snowball in. Will be able to take the Wraith King down, surely. Almisha will find the kill as Vitali dead in that back end of the forest. Ooh, they nearly find the snipe on the courier, but oh, wait, what? he snuck into the trees. Wait, huh? There's no huh? way. How? They can't see him. <laughs> he's found a hidey oh, hole. Oh, my goodness. How? Radiant's I swear he was like right in front of the invoker and somebody just got it. <laughs> All right, that, that was impressive, not gonna lie. Kill the race yeah. king, out of there. saves his courier, and survives. Ah, oh, doesn't get the bounty though. Ah. <laughs> terrible, terrible plays. Doesn't get the bounty. 
We'll see what he gets up to next, because he's still thinking about a snowball. But he gets tornadoed, burrow struck, and dying's there with his wow. ultimate. Okay. And he, he just popped. Finally falls. <laughs> They're like, oh, finally, we found him. And then they just pop him just like that. Oh, look, there he is. Race King with his Midas is going to be farming up the triangle now. And his Phantom nice. Lancer. Does he nearly? Wait, hang on a second. PL's Courier. Okay. I was. I always look at these players with like one <laughs> item queued. And he has Robe of Magi queued. And I'm thinking, no way has he got Diffuse Blade 11 <laughs> minutes in. Surely he not. Almost, he does. He does. He has a Diffuse Blade. He's an alacrity in the rest finish the room. That's it. Yeah, he has it. Where's the rest of it? Top. top lane, dying near. Zaza. He's been snowballed on. Under the tier one, there's three heroes still here from the Radiant. So a burst strike back towards his tower. Tries to get Greedy sanking away. And the soul rips there onto the tusk. But the Hawk Vision, it gives them the information they need. Seeing the sanking, but he's gone back into Sandstorm. And Wind Ranger with a focus fire there. Turn around by Wyvern with a Winter's Curse. But Greedy's tanky enough. And he's got another Burrow to come straight in towards the Beastmaster. Kills off the boar first. Holds the Burrow for now. And Tusk, yet again, is hiding in one of these shadowy areas of the map still alive wow that was like i think we need to got like a hundred hits off or something he was just not dying oh okay that's a pretty big kill tusk onto the sanking getting him on the sentry waiting for his cooldowns nice good return there and that's pl with a diffuser blade very quick yeah, indeed. I told you. 12 I told you you had it. Right. <laughs> I, I was like, there's no way. But yeah, with a band of Elven skin on top of it all as well, heading towards Manta, or S and Y, as he's got queued up. It's a very good buy against um, Sanking and Invoker, the S and Y here. I like it a lot. So now it's a situation where Hikori with this PL, this Beastmaster, the Lash, everyone it feels like is ready to fight, while 0900 is that waiting game for the Relic, the Radiance of Wraith King. Radiance, exactly. I mean, he will have it at a pretty decent timing. Um, I think the Midas is not slowing it down that much. Uh, it's going to be good for his... the big grand scheme of things, you know? The overall acceleration increases yeah. in the long term. Middle tower pretty widespread fallen. across the map as the tower is taken mid lane. No defense there from Hokori. They're TPing Lesh up, bringing numbers there for the tier one top. While it looks like PL and Tusk are the ones lapping up Dyer's the remaining bits of CS and tower. trying to shove out any waves that come their way. It's going to be a huge fight here, Gary. Smoke up with the blink sanking. But they feel it. They feel that 0900 is coming up here. Let's still make the jump. Wyvern has a very quick kill they can secure. Lash and Beastmaster now no longer want any part of this tier 1 tower push. And that's the vanguard of 0900's draft. That's the four heroes making that shield the wall in front of the Wraith King. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I'm not invoker. He can come down bottom lane. That tier one falling means the wave is trending towards his tier two, so he's got a bit of a longer lane to run down and keep on farming. But look, look at 0900. They've, oh, they've been spotted by the hawk, sniped by Sludden. He knew it was coming. It means the Sand King can't get the initiation into the Beastmaster he wanted. Visibility. Another smoke up. Ooh. They Quick see the PL. Smokes from 0900. Invoker spots yeah. the Phantom Lancer and they know which one's the real one. So they can immediately borrow yeah, in with the Shaker back, Shot. Though. The smoke does break, but they've got the chain stuns they need for the EMP to land. He doppelgangers away, barely escaping, but the epicenter was ready and waiting. Greedy sets it up Huge for a kill on Lumiere, and then now blinking and stunning again. Winter Wyvern gets caught out. It was nearly a two man. Sunstrike's gonna whiff as the Undying is in a 1v3 up on the high ground. Gets his tombstone down. It's focused by the Beastmaster, though, as the Winter's Curse does catch out the Invoker, and they've got a roar on top of the Invoker. Leshrax come in with all the damage he's got. The Deathling Blast pushes them back. A tornado there as well, but the Invoker, he can't. <laughs> Ghost Dwarf. Nowhere to go. With Invoke on cooldown. I mean, it was a really good kill onto the PL, but I think going forward from there was just a big mistake on the side of 0900. They should have just settled for that one big kill, wait for their cooldowns, just push the lanes out, get a better positioning on the map there.
but giving away that invoker kill, Hikori is definitely gonna enjoy that. They got the Necro 3 now on Beastmaster, and you saw in that last fight, they got that Winter's Curse into a roar. We're gonna be seeing a lot of that this game. It's a really good way to get rid of the invoker. Yeah, such a snappy instant form of initiation. I mean, what, what does Invoker have? Spirit Vessel is a couple, oh, 900 gold away. He had Midas queued up for a second there, and I was wondering. But look at that. Vision used very nicely up on the high ground. The Observer Ward gives the intel they need for Greedy to make the jump, but a Snowball is out of there, and El Misho, he's managed to okay. actually dodge away from the Tornado, because I think Winterwyvern pulled the Creep Camp away from them as the Tusk was snowballing. Yeah, that was interesting. And they immediately was, smoked. Uh... Spotted out. They got. They don't. Wait. They're not winning. Right. Cold snap. Snowball. It stops down on the low ground. Interesting stuff. With the deafening blast. The cold embrace comes and saves Vitaly for a second. Sans King is still on cooldown with that barrage strike. They curse him. They got the tomb. As an ice wall gets plonked down, they've got the kill on Greedy. The tomb is gone. And Shredding them now. Two kills in a really scrappy, awkward fight. 0900 is still trying to go 4v5 because Wraith King, he, he is not involved. He's got the Radiance though. It's time to get involved, baby. It's done. 60 minutes. What need have I for this? Invoker steals the Arcane Rune from the Leshrac as well. Yeah, we're gonna. I, I don't know if they have any smokes left on Dyer. Yeah, they do. They have one left on the Wind Ranger. It's time. It's time to use it. It's time to go. Maybe Wind Ranger picks up the Blink Dagger first before that. Not sure, but definitely gonna see some action now. Having a much. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's not even close. I think he's got more net worth now than he did in the entirety of that. Uh, yeah. Skyrath game. It, it feels like both heroes kind of similar in terms of they need that first early item to really accomplish stuff. You know, Wind Ranger with a javelin, Rod of Atos, I guess, is much bigger for the Skyrath Mage. The thing about Wind Ranger at least is uh, she has the escape. Oh, Invoker just gets oh, snapped. Yep, that's what happens. Primal Roar, Necrobox. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. But yeah, you're right. Winner has much better ways to get in and out of fights, and so does the Sand King. That blink stun is going to cause problems every step of the way for Hokori. Sand King, thinking about the epicenter. They've also actually caught out. Yo. Since Wind Ranger with a latch, he's burning through them all with a Pulse Nova, undying Wraith King. They're both falling low. The reincarnation is used up, but the Snowball doesn't save near. Lash Rack's down, the Tombstone's being focused, but Beastmaster dies to the skeletons after the zombie yeah, can handle. Like and Phantom Lancer, you're right. They focused the wrong one, though. He's done a an interesting little juke there, sends his real hero the correct way, and trying to bait with his illusions does so successfully. But Lumiere, he's... I need to get that first initiation. I mean, they got the kill on the Invoker, which was nice. I like the decision on 0900 to go back in there and fight while the Roar was on cooldown. And they had the Wraith King with the Radiance plus the Reincarnation. Now, Hakori, they're going to need to make another smoke, possibly, and kill this Wraith King while his Reincarnation is still down. They got to they gotta bring this guy down, man. He's so strong right now. At the rate he's going at, the PO is not going to be able to out-carry him. Look at all the TPs they bring top. They feel that smoke maneuver up there. But in fact, Hokori are into the Roche pick. Got a Roshan. Okay, I like this. The double damage pick up on the top rune. That's so nice. Into the Roshan. Yeah, with the Tusk, with the tag team, and then the Beastmaster's aura. They see the Wyvern. We got the Wyvern, though. Oh, Instant no. buyback. Roshan sitting at 2,000 HP. This one's getting close. Man. But they're not committing uh, for it. I guess they don't know. Yeah, 900 don't know that the Rosh is being taken. They just, like, thought this Wyvern was just coming into ward or something. And the Wraith King also doesn't have this reincarnation, so probably they wouldn't have gone regardless. It's a really smart take there from Hikori. Very fortunate double damage rune as well. Yeah, I think Invoker didn't have a TP, so he was probably making the call that he can't be there. And like you said, all of yeah. the other additional factors meant probably a, a good idea for 0900 to stay out of the pit. But that, that move was really nice because you expect Wraith King to TP up top to clear out the top wave 
and it was Wraith King with Windranger that both TP up there, expecting the smoke gank, which well, it was coming. Like Wyvern, Tusk, PL were all roaming up there to meet with a Lash Rack. And then they just slip into Roche, they drop the shoulder and they do the sneaky little play. So Aegis yeah, in their the, hands. The moment they so notice the double damage, they're like, oh, hold on, guys. Oh, why don't we just do this with the Beastmaster aura? So big. Just get Aegis. I I'm not so sure how I feel about this Invoker Vessel, Gary. Feels like it's very late and uh, not gonna Radiant really accomplish a whole lot. We're playing as Pio, that hero can just doppelganger and Radiant remove it quite easily. It's nice with the urn early on with Quaswax, but then you're already you earned, transitioning yeah. into Exhort later anyway. A good Ooh. tornado with the EMP. Much needed tornado. Not, not catching Vitaly, but yeah, stops their advance at the very least. Tusk is still trying to get there with a blink. Jericho. He could kill the gap. Him. I'm dying. Oh, nice Jericho. shot. Very Beautiful nice. stuff. Vitaly and Nier both latched up together. He throws the roar from Beastmaster in onto some skeletons or something. Oh, and Wraith King straight back up to high ground, looking for any targets that are left around. But it's a gotta good be now. disciplined retreat from Hikori. The trouble is the Blink Shackle shot and the Tornado gonna be able to catch out and initiate on the Winter Wyvern. Gardic's down and Greedy, he's got a Yule Scepter. Finds the real PL, but a TP from near. Leshrak has joined the fight yet again. Sand King is cleared up and they've got a Warless Punch on the Undying. He's Soul Rips, but he's shredded. And Wraith King's reincarnation, he will come back to life, but he's in the middle of two big core heroes. They meet here, they focus Give fire near, crit it down. Sladen's there with a perfect jump, but they're gonna bring them all to the ground. A double kill for Wraith King. <laughs> they really wanted to go for that Wraith King again, but I think they had no idea there was a BKB up on him. And right before he died, he got that big crit onto the Lesh. As soon as he's back up, another crit onto the Lesh, and the Lesh just dies. So flimsy. Not a whole lot of armor on him right now. So huge win for 0900 now. It looks like your boys are doing it, Gary. Yeah, the Midas Radiance, the item timing, the synchronization with the rest of his team, it's all perfectly worked out here for the Wraith King. Mm -hmm. He's done a great job. Got... Done a great job. You know what to tell him after this game. <laughs> and, and it he's was got all a... thanks to me. He didn't buy armlet, Theban. Thank you. I mean, good job. Well done. And he's got a shower now, too. So uh, the window oh, where Pio could possibly maybe burn the man of the Wraith King and then get him killed like that has completely gone out the window. Mm -hmm. Like, this is how I expected that one game we watched the Wraith King versus PL go, <laughs> right? Had he not bought an armlet. Yeah, the game we're ref is like the PO is just not able to have as much impact as the Wraith King in the fights anymore. Every time the Radiance Wraith King you know, puts himself in the oh. front and in between his team and the PL, like, so hard. Invoker? That is not your base. Oh, hey, buddy. Yep, that, that definitely not his base. What was he doing there, actually? I'm not sure. I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I clicked on the Tusk and I saw Tusk Dust and I thought, what the hell is he? Oh, there's an Invoker. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yep. I was admiring the uh, Wraith King. Well, oh, it's now. admiring him die. Oh dear! Huge that kill. Is a travesty. A huge wow. kill there for Lumiere. Invoker kill into smoke into Wraith King kill. The sequence of events couldn't have been sweeter for Hokori. That pause couldn't have been sweeter, right? <laughs> I think they lost complete focus. Invoker instantly dying right after that, and then the Wraith King too. Jeez. I mean, he just like underestimated what Hikori was gonna do next after while the Invoker was dead. They're on the offensive, uh, Gary. Uh, there is no Wraith King for 40 seconds. There's no buyback. That's a tier three potentially. They'll try and mount the defense though. Edict. Oh yeah, God. If Lesh can get up, they're not, they're not gonna go for it. They're actually going back. They're not committed to the sandstorm is just such an annoying skill to push into right now and he, he's pretty farmed right he's got a play mail he's got yule's mm -hmm. got it's very hard here to bring down on the side of her and then you also have to worry about the buy, potential buybacks with some of these heroes and the wow oh my goodness <laughs> what, scary. what was it was it ta refraction wow no 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 it was uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, no, it wasn't, it's not something that amazing, it's actually the Undying. Click on his items. Oh yeah? Look how farmed he is. Oh jeez. He's got a Greaves on the Courier. 
Oh shit! Well, okay, I was I was impressed with RK with Arcane Mech Buckler Fluffy Hat Wand, but he's got full. Yeah, he's got a. Gre is that? Yeah. He's got a full greaves. He's gigantic on Jericho. Like you don't really see Undying to become this farmed. Let's and go. That, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be very hard for Hikari to fight into this as long as he gets a high gun tombstone. And it's such a sick smoke wraparound. This could not be better for 0900. They'll get the immediate jump onto Beastmaster, but the Sand King doesn't have the follow through from his Wraith King. Shackle Shot's there onto the Winter Wyvern, but the Wraith King is struggling to get onto a target. And it looks like they're going to try and take down Greedy first. The Soul Rip buys him a bit of time. The first strike to the low ground gets him out of danger. Invoker, he's Ghost Warped, he's running away, but the Sand King looks like he's going to be the first to fall with the Winter Wyvern and the Beastmaster, both down. It's still a decent one for 0900, but it turned scrappy quickly. Sand King's initiation seemed to be out of time with the rest of his squad. A little bit hasty, definitely. I completely agree with you on that one. He just jumped the gun there. He just had to wait, get his team nearby. Even if you don't get the jump just because you think they're going to run away, that's what okay. Just keep hunting them, stalk them, stalk them, wait for the right opportunity. Uh, but in the end, they still come out with the W. They got the kill on the Beast and the Wyvern. Hopefully next time they'll execute a little bit better. And that's going to be a sign of things to come because Roshan fast spawn is one minute away. Both teams are going to be wanting and vying for control of the pit, the Roshan and the goodies that he holds. And right now, Hakori, they're all grouped up in that top lane. It looks like they're going to go and try and smoke again as five. They want to force a team fight and a big one at that because usually I'd, I'd expect the Beastmaster or Lesh to be bottom lane, shoving it out getting a bit of farm and going, but they are... Uh, Sanking? They are wanting I... kills. Yeah. Borrow into Yules and Blink. He's gonna get roared here. He can Yules Blink. Yules. He can jump away. Oh! Nice. Split Earth oh, ever so close to catching him. Tombstone's dropped here. In onto some summons of the Beastmaster. The Shackle Shot. I don't like this tomb. Doesn't really That's latch a behind. very bad tomb there. Dies to PL illusions, yeah. Rain yeah, not only that, um, it's completely mistimed. And now Hikori know that there's no tombstone up, they can just run at 0900. Like, this tombstone is so Radiance important in these fights to provide attack. vision. Break blinks. There's two blinks on the side of Radiant, too. Don't you don't really want to fight if you're 0900 right now. You got to get out. You got to concede this side. And you got bottom kids pushing into. You can wait for the, the Radiant team to go and defend that first. Unless... Unless the Shackle Shot, Wraith King walks into the middle of them. Tusk is nearly dead. Another Shackle Shot catches PL with the latch behind as well. And now a tornado with Zaza trying to run away from the BKB Lash Rack. Wraith King is still standing. His reincarnation finally being utilized. And that Invoker shredded by the snowball back in from Tusk. But it's a double kill for Wraith King. The Phantom Lance is matching up against him. But El Misho, he's picked off in the middle of it all by Slud. It's Wind Ranger. Went to Wyvern. Doesn't have curse. He's trying to throw out the splinter blast onto Greedy and PL with a re 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 initiation. He's in and out of that fight so fast. They're forcing the TPs home from 0900. Sladin is out there, but they Raid want King, the Raid King. He's gonna get stunned up here. Surely they they'll stun? find the catch, no, but they don't no get stun. it. No stuns. Wow. But they still convincingly sweep through that dire jungle. Yep. I mean, it was a horrible fight. You don't have Tombstone, and they're just gonna run at you. Dyer's you stay without your biggest team fighting ability. Now they're gonna go up into the high ground with this edict. You have no glyph up anymore. Wraith King's out of there as well without his BKB. He knows he's Dyer's gonna die very quickly. Invoker's up now though. But no Sand King for 20. Mm -hmm. Taking that tier gonna... 3, Roshan is alive. So they can go and maintain their lanes and go back again. Yeah. They're gonna need this Russian, but 0900 is like one bad tombstone away from losing another fight and pretty much conceding the lead to Hakori here. Oh yeah, that's right. 0900 are ones that have been 6k net worth ahead for quite some time, but conceding the first tier three. And the way it's looking, Aegis and Cheese going the way of Hakori. Sunstrike scouts it. Wraith King walks into the pit, surrounded by Phantom Lancer illusions already, though. And they've got to reset. Hold that high it's ground time. for a sec. It's time for the rush hand dance. It sure is. And Phantom Lancer, he is a master of that dance. 
Illusion scouting, burning mana, chipping away at Roche little by little, farming jungle camps. He is everywhere but nowhere at the same time. Yep. Oh, 900 taking a step into the Roshan pit now. Epicenter being channeled potentially, but they've got a roar on the Invoker. Down he goes, dead for a minute. Epi Borrow does come in, but the Sand King losing his life so quickly. The Leshrac is BKB. Still going to fall. The Wraith King focuses him now a Winter's Curse. But Vitality's dying in the Sandstorm. The Sand King's still there with his Wraith King. The Lords of Battle still survive. Invoker undying down for a good 30 seconds while the PL secures the Wind Ranger in the back. Beastmaster's also brought Roshan. back, so yeah, Roshan we go. Yep, and the Leshrac actually die back here, but that's okay because they're still going to be able to take this Rosh and they're not going to get punished by the long death timer on the Leshrac. Sand King. Sand King, no, he has no ulti, he can't, he can't do anything. They're conceding this all together. PL's going to have an Aegis. They're going to probably put the cheese onto the Leshrac too now. Things are looking awful for 0900 at this moment. Immortality for the treasury. Yeah, this lash has become a, a pretty big problem. Like the amount of damage he puts out b before you can actually kill him and focus him down, because he's got that BKB. He just runs straight through the middle of everyone, focuses the supports. But I think primarily it's this invoker who's getting caught out by Raw yeah, at the they... start of these fights. Exactly, the Invoker is a problem right now for Ona Hand. Like, he's got to get way better positioning. He does have a BKB up, and I think he needs to just play behind the Wraith King, Alacrity him, and that's it. That's all you have to do in the fight, is just Alacrity the Wraith King. And then, if somebody gets on one of your other heroes, you can Tornado, do whatever else that you possibly need to do. But not having that Alacrity is really costing them a lot of these fights. He has a Abyssal Blade now, too, on the Wraith King. He sure does. Because, yeah, you'd expect Huge this disabled. Wraith King, this Undying, they are your frontliners. They're the ones that are meant to move forward. Phantom Lancer, the real one, does get spotted by the Wraith King, but the Abyssal Blade back from the PL, catching out the Undying, forcing a Tornado EMP. Tombstone in a decent position here, though, as Sladin is being chased Easily and hunted, dead. but his own BKB going to work, and Lumiere still being focused for and Shackle shot it up to something behind him. I can't see what it was, but Burrow and Chainstun still alive, Lumiere. He's still going undying has to get himself the hell out of here now because hakori they have turned the tidal wave of 0900 oh, no, has been halted yeah, the levees have been raised and hakori they hold their high ground raping dies once and it looks like it might be twice buy back and tp in to the outpost and the undying first strike ready for the sand king he needs to make a move does catch a few illusions and they turn to deal with lumiere but these pl illusions that are so damn powerful they're shredding through the Wraith King. A Meteor will land on him with a burst strike, and then maybe, maybe they get the PL. He's out of mana. The Aegis is all they'll claim, though. One life down. But Hokori don't have backup for him. Beastmaster's not there. Three heroes dead, and 0900 have done it with that buyback TV from Undying and the ability to drag this fight out longer and longer. The Lumia PL has finally been found. Phantom Rush off to the Mud Golems. Doppelganger to the low ground. He's not going to die a second time around. They want him desperately to die. In goes Sludden, but no mana for Shackle Shot. Tries to keep tabs on him for the Wraith King Abyssal Blade. Stunned back with a PL Abyssal himself. And now the game of illusion baiting, but it's not going to work out. Phantom Lancer <laughs> dead for a minute and a half. <laughs> you know, I... I was surprised, but they thought they could kill the Wraith King and they tunnel vision everything onto him and then they just kind of allowed the Sand King who bought out, sit there with the Sandstorm, they got the Meteor off, you know, you got this Wind Ranger just casting power shots, all these squishy heroes just able to sit behind the Wraith King who has this uh, Elven Tunic and the Radiance. Those illusions were missing a lot of hits on him. Like, they didn't have the Leshrac available too to be able to dish the magic damage. Oh, oh Wyvern, you've gone for a cheeky curse. Oh, no. But you pay for it. Dead for 50 seconds, and that's a DD Alacrity Wraith King shredding through these objectives as the tier 3 in that mid lane. It will come down. And 0900 in a pretty good spot here just to finish off the lane of Barracks because they're going to start to realize there's no buyback here on either of the dead heroes. There it is. Epi. 
with a burrow, Sunstrike to try and pop the tusk and get the snowball off. Barely in time, the snowball return with a tornado sending him skyward. El Misho, yeah, that's him done for. Transition to the bottom lane now as the tier three under assault from 0900. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant you can see what Red Team does as long as the Invoker stays alive. <laughs> exactly. He's so dependent on this alacrity. Give him that alacrity. Oh, I'm deny. I deny on the melee barracks. Nia, you cheeky devil. And 0900, they came, they saw, they conquered, and they will get back to their base to reset and calm down. Bounty. So what's the plan for Hakori now? You're a couple of lanes of ranks down. You were in the driving seat for a good five or six minutes there when you held Aegis. Radiance top tower is under attack. But at this point, you know, are you, are you demoralized? Do you think you can still move out on the map and try and reclaim a bit of, a bit of advantage? You're super demoralized in this position. Um, I think... I assume some of their players are probably like, oh god, what, what do we do now? And the Leshrac especially, especially the Leshrac is looking at himself, he's like, where are my items? He just dies so quickly to this alacrity Wraith King, he just gets two-shotted essentially right now. Like he spent too much time in these fights just suiciding uh, for his team and such, instead I feel like he just gotta start farming up. And he can farm very quickly too, he needs items bad. Haste. Yeah, it, it felt good in the short term when he was, you know, dunking on the support all the way to second. Cataclysm with a Burrow Strike, Winter Wyvern, 100 HP remains, and that's enough to fly back to the base. And it felt good for the Lash in the short term when he was, you know, dunking on the supports, sprinting towards them in fights, killing them off, letting the PL survive. But I think you're right, at this point, he's probably kicking himself for being so selfless. I should have been more selfish. The position 4 on 0900 has more farm than the position 2 Leshrac right now. Oof. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oof. Yeah. Sladen has an... He's got a Monkey King bar, a BKB, uh -huh. and a Blink Dagger. <laughs> Going for a Lincoln's next. Well, well, well. Absolutely gigantic. Humongous. Enormous. He's a monster. What an absolute giant. unit. He is an absolute unit. He's on the wrong Radiant's side of the map, though. Tower is under attack. Pushed out the bot lane. The rest of his team is up at top. Fast you know spawn on right Roche in a minute and a Radiant's half. What, what do they need? Hakori need an MKB. Or no, not an MKB. He needs a rapier. That's mm. what he needs on the Phantom Lancer. He needs his rapier so he can get on that Windinger, like literally two shot or in an Abyssal Blade duration. And then now you can actually do something as this Wraith King. Because his evasion is so annoying. He's got the, the tunic was actually the best item he could have gotten on the Wraith King, I think. 16% evasion. Then the radiance also causes your 17%. the illusions and stuff to miss 17% of the attacks. Hell yeah. But now, now illusionists cape time. Double damage! Super Ooh, nice he switched item. it. Uh, yeah, I think I would have kept the tunic, honestly. For all those reasons you're mentioning, keeps him exactly. much tankier. You can, you oh, can go to the until. Sand King Abyssal got the Lotus Orb off though, so returns the Abyssal. Now Wraith King stuns him up. Phantom Lance is caught up in a chain disable fiesta, but the Sand King is still dispatched with. No buyback on Sand King, so it's down to Invoker Wind Ranger to zone back the Radiant. Cold Embrace on Lash, the Cataclysm is coming. The Sun Strikes land, and yours up. Lash right caught in the air with a meteor landing on his head and Deathling Blast pushing him back, but two heroes down for the Dire, trading for one on that Radiant team. And the Invoker's gonna get bashed. Do they have a roar? Any more stuns? They've got a Winter's Curse. They're not keeping him locked up in place for a second or two. This DKB is still working. That War's Punch, it will disable it with another Abyssal Blade. They get the Invoker kill. Very good aggression coming out from Hikori here. And getting that ward out seats the entirety of that fight. 0900, especially the Wraith King, jumping in, trying to save that Sanking without the support of his, the rest of his teammates. And as his teammates start to trickle into the fight, it's just, you know, the spells are going off all at the wrong times. They're not combining their skills together. Invoker was not there to Radiant's support up the Wraith King while he was killed. using his Abyssal and stuns, Radiant's providing him any damage. Attack.
what happened to the invoker did he not cast cataclysm like right away he did it like very, he should just he did it at the very start and it nearly okay. killed the lash because the lash got cold embraced or maybe maybe not the very start but within the first five seconds of the fight and then lash got yules and right. invoker dropped the meteor on him but it, uh, it was a very separated fight. Tombstone was a little bit too far behind. Wraith King couldn't stick on a target. Hmm. And that was Hokori getting a drop on them. So, a little bit of a breathing room from Hokori, but I don't think they really killed the important hero, which is the Wraith King. I deny that illusion. Got an MKB now on the PLs. So at this point, yeah, now you would want to have the Illusionist Cape on the Wraith King, but before they have anything to go through your evasion, the Tunic would have been very nice. Good attack speed, good movement speed. You know how Wraith King loves all that. He sure does. 30 seconds for Roche. Everybody has their Dyer's full squad so alive. Oh, 0900. They smoke up together. Radiant there is a Radiant Courier scan. in the pit. Went to Wyvern Center in. Radiant scanning, watching for the Dyer trying to make their way up on that high ground. Radiant they scan a Wraith King illusion. <laughs> Bissled. The Courier. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, get rid of that shit. Get out of here. No vision inside Easy the pit. Money. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's like a giant creep, man. 110 gold to every hero on your team. Look at the smoke from Hakori. They're going to walk straight into them. The jump onto the Wind Ranger couldn't react in time, was looking elsewhere. Window shopping or something. And now onto the Wraith King. Phantom Lancer. Not wanting to commit too hard. They forced the buyback out of Wind Ranger and also undying. Roared and caught, but the Beastmaster turned upon by the San King Burrow. And Wraith King, well, he's forced to whack him dying, and down he goes. Jericho, he's gonna have to buy back and come into this fight again. Because Wraith King has BKB'd up, but the Ghost Scepter from Lesh buys him space and Yule's up to get away from the stun as the Epicenter catches Beastmaster. And now a task. Snowball tried the attempt to save the BM, but it's not enough. And Greedy's in the Sandstorm with no reveal from the Radiant. They don't see him. He's low resolved up, and this fight is going around in circles. It's a Wind roundabout as the Wind Rangers dive back. The Invoker can't join the battle, dead for 60 seconds. Tusk has barely survived thanks to the force and the cold embrace, and they have kited the Wraith King into oblivion. His Wraith Fire Blast on Reincarnation will do very little, but a blink away, slowed by the Diffuser Blade. A four staff back by the Undying. He's got Soul Rip, he's got Greaves. Can keep him alive long enough. It looks like the Wraith King is still going to get bashed up and slowed enough. The Greaves are there, but there's no more saves, and he's dead for a hundred. Roshan now alive means Hakori in a beautiful spot. Another comeback into this game. They're gonna get Roshan, they're gonna get Aegis, there's an Agonims there too. I wonder if the PL is gonna be the one to pick that up or they're gonna give it to a Leshrac maybe? Leshrac's Axe is really strong. So I can totally see them getting that, especially if you use it on the Wraith King. Or sorry, like you when you use it when you're on top of the Wraith King, it's really nice. He can't attack. But it looks like the PL will probably just be the one to pick that up. Probably. We'll see what goes on. That is a Roshan easily taken by Hikori, though. Third one of the game. And yep, now the net worth lead. The that was, what was it? 18,000 net worth lead for 0900, down to literally nothing yet again. Same thing. Cataclysm Burrow Strike. That is an immediate snipe on the Winter Wyvern. <laughs> so that, that will delay the, uh, the advantage that they've built up. Yeah, push definitely. up the high ground. And it I think probably... they're gonna have to back off soon. Maybe they can get the tier 3 tower, but if they continue on with this push, it's not gonna look good for them. Sanking's in a great place to get a nice epicenter off. Great borrow. I mean, that kill on Wyvern has basically saved the Wraith King from having to buy back. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the frozen sigil from Tusk. How I've missed you. Did you really? The only reason I missed it because I got, you know, the Vici Gaming uh, yeah. cosmetic and I've not been able oh, to yeah. use it for like four years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know why? <laughs> I think that's why they brought it back because there were like people like, well, what, what are we supposed to do with this item? Yeah. Like, I paid for this. Yeah, goddammit, I want to support my team. Tusk snowballing. Let's see if he can do anything else. Four staff, blink, anything. Just, just death. 
That's all that awaits him. Buys back in a snap decision as Greedy, Mr. Sanking over here, very far forward, looking for the blink burrow, but Beastmaster. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. I mean, scanning. dude, that Beastmaster is so cocky, not clicking BKB before he TP'd out. I know it's a 10 second BKB, but if you got caught out there, you would have put your team in a horrible position. He's already bought out. That's a good point, yeah. You're so careful with your life at this point, because we, I mean, we said it at the start of the series, right? This late game scenario, it is now past 35 minutes. We're 45 minutes into the game, and this is where buybacks pretty much mean everything for these South American teams. Mm -hmm. Faith King, Sand King, Wyvern, the only three with Radiant buybacks Tusk. at this point. Beastmaster, Windranger, Undying, and Tusk have all used theirs, and everybody else is lacking the gold for it. A bit of a poke and prod here from 0900. Getting back up to the high ground for a bit of a tactical advantage with the terrain. Tornado EMP doesn't really do too much, but Raid King has found the jump on Wyvern, probably forcing the buyback there, and he's also on top of Nier. Snowball comes out, the PL's chasing into the right-hand side of the fight with a roar. They will look to pick off the Invoker, but the Lesh is tumbling. This Wraith King is shredding the rest of your squad. The war is punched, but the zombies on the high ground tombstone, they are crowding this battle. They do come back in with some PL illusions, but Lumiere, he changes tack onto the Sand King with a bash, forcing the Yule. Sand King has Boris Strike and a Blink to turn around this fight. And Phantom Lazar with no choice but the doppelganger back to safety while the Winter Wyvern, the dieback is there. The Wraith King is still standing. Now it's all down to your PL. He is literally 1v5. I don't think he can do this. Theban, the Phantom Lance is stunned. Doppelganger in a second, he's got Aegis, yes, but two lives mean nothing when you're in this scenario. You're just being pummeled, beaten, bullied into the ground. He turns and fights. He knows he has no chance, but the battle against his opponents, the Invoker, the Undying and Wraith King, they are scrambling to kill this goddamn Phantom Lancer. Catman die. Aegis is gone, the illusions are clear, and now we're back. Draw 1v5, yet again, the PL Abyssal Blaze, the Mother Meteor, the damage. Is doing it. The doppelganger off for the stun. The immediate bash. A missile blade will do very little here. And Lumiere is the final casualty of war. Five heroes down. The full team wipe. And the GG as 0900. They've done it. Theban, Wraith King Builders worked. Nice. I mean, that last fight was so messy from Hikori there. They, uh, the PO and the Beastmaster went into.